So let's go ahead, now that we kind of understand what we're trying to achieve here with our digital signatures, and I'm, I'm going to write a scratch program that we're going to eventually throw away, or maybe in our blockchain video, I'll keep it out there, uh, just so we can break down all the different parts of, of how this is all going to work, so we can uh, so we can learn it, and then we'll bring it back into the, into the main system. So what I'm going to do here, uh, let's see, under, you know what, I'm going to add a new folder here just called Scratch. And maybe I'll just call this SIG, and I'll do a main.go here, new file, main.go. And we'll do a package main, and we'll do a function without quotes, main. And we'll just kind of hack on some code here. In fact, what I might do also is just add our little run function. So if error, error not equals nil, then we can just do a, say, log.fatal with the error, right? And then that way we can just return errors out as we kind of hack on this and we'll get the logging. Turn nil. Sweet. Okay. Now, part of us working with this um, sort of signature also will be uh, will be also about maybe hashing data. It's, I think hashing is going to be hashing is a big part of the blockchain. We're we're going to use it to create our auditable database. Um, we're, we'll use it. With our signatures, and we'll we'll, we'll use it um, quite a bit. So, so maybe we need to kind of talk about hashing first, and then sort of bring in some support that we need for hashing. Now, let's just talk about hashing for a second. What is the the the, the purpose of well, what do we need from a hashing algorithm? Let, let, let's start there. Th there are three things that every hashing algorithm must provide or we can't use it. The first thing is, let me, let me clean this up here, and let's just think about hashing for a second, all right? So the idea is that I have some data, here it is, some data of some, some number of bytes, and if I run that through some sort of hash function, right, I'm going to get some sort of, just say, some sort of string, okay? Some sort of string of some length. There it is, all right? Now, and, and let's say a string of some fixed length. There it is. So here's the, here are the three things that we need from any hashing algorithm, all right? The first thing is, if I take the same data and run it through the hash algorithm again. So if we use the same hashing algorithm again with the same exact data, I need to get the same exact sort of result. I need the same string. That, that's number one, okay? So, so number one, right, we, we, always, we always get the same, same return value, right? Return value. We always get the same return value for the same data running through the same hash function. If not, we're, we're in trouble. Number two. Number two is if we change the data even by one byte, I just change one byte of data, then I should get a completely different sort of return value, different string. I mean, it should not be close. I shouldn't be able to look at the result and identify that these two pieces of data were pretty much the same by looking at the, at the result. So if we change even one byte, that return value has to be like very different, very different. No way to correlate any sort of information um, between the two. And then the third item, the third item that's really important for our hashing function is that there can't be any collisions, no collisions. That, that would be bad. No collisions. In other words, if I was able to take a different piece of data, a different value, run it through the hash function, and get the same, <laughs> same exact string, we're in trouble. Because then what can happen is somebody can spoof us, right? If we're using hashes in a way of, of doing auditing and validating, and suddenly two different data values produce the same hash, 
we're, we're putting ourselves in, in bad shape. So, so, so any hashing algorithm we use has to provide these sort of feature functionalities, right? We always get the same value for the same data. Uh, even if you just change one bit of that data, we get a very different value, and there can't be any collisions. We can't have any collisions. Um, that data always produces a unique sort of string value or hash, and there's no collision. So we need all of that from our hashing algorithms. Now, what I'm going to do here as we also sort of hack on our scratch, you will see in the uh, blockchain project in the original a package called signature. So under foundation, um, under blockchain, I'm going to add our signature signature package and that will have a signature signature.go and I've tried to write the signature package in a way that it's very very generic not tied to this particular blockchain in any way so we're gonna see um, the use of like empty interfaces and things like that here I, I wanted it to be to be really um, uh, what's the word? It's word generic, okay? So let me start here with our hash function. Let's bring this in for a second. So, and I'm going to add our constant here that we need to. We're going to break all this code down. I want us to make sure we really understand it. So what we're going to use for our hash function is essentially the SHA-256 package. And this sum function what it does is it takes the, any data that we put into it and it returns 32 bytes back that is going to be a unique value that, for that data. Again, with the idea that if we run this again for the same data, it comes back the same, that if I change even a bit, it's very different, and that there's no collisions. No other piece of data on the planet will get back the same hash value. Okay, so we're going to get back these 32 bytes, and if, I want you to notice also that I need a set of bytes to run through the, the sum256 function. Um, the data that we're going to be leveraging on the blockchain are going to be Go types. They're going to be structures, right? They're going to be values. And so one kind of maybe not efficient, but, but simple way to convert a Go value of any type into bytes is to just turn it into JSON. So is this the most efficient way to do it? No, it's not, but we can understand it. This is a reference implementation. That's OK. So given any value that we pass into this hash function, we'll convert it into JSON to get a set of bytes. And then we'll hash that to get back 32 bytes. And then this hex util package which comes out of Ethereum. Look up here, Ethereum. That's the Ethereum um, APIs and Geth and all that stuff. Uh, again, I'm modeling a lot of stuff over Ethereum. When I'm not, I'll, I'll explain. I'll, I'll share with you everywhere I can when something's more Bitcoin than Ethereum or independent. But this hex util is very nice because what it does is it encodes the hex using that 0x prefix. And if you've ever gone on Etherscan or you've done anything with blockchain to date, um, all of these sort of hashes are always signatures and hashes are always um, encoded as a hexadecimal value with that 0x. So, so this function auto-magically adds that 0x. We don't have to do it manually. I really love it. So we end up with some sort of value. So look, just with this alone, just now with our hash function alone, right? I mean, we could play with this just a little bit here um, to see how that hash function is going to work. So what we could do. Uh, is maybe to find something like string. Let, let's do this. V, which is a struct, literal struct, right? Which will have a name field. Or even let's just pretend we have a from field, which is a string. And a to field, which is a string. And a value, which can be an int right now. And then what we can do here is say, fine, this is going to be from bill to John value of, let's say, 10, whatever 10 means, 10 units. And now I've got this sort of struct value. Now, we go to our signature package and go to our hash. 
right, any value v, that comes back with a hash, oops, hash value. And I think hash also returns, no, it doesn't, just returns hash. And now I can just do a frump dot print line. And we can print out that hash, right? Okay. So hash of V. So there it is, right there. So let's take this and we're going to run this program. So there's our main copy path. What I'm going to do is go into our make file. Uh, and, you know, here at the top, I'm just going to add, um, I'll just call it a scratch. So whatever scratch is pointing to at the time. Go run. And it can be that. So whatever scratch is, I'll just change it up. You can do that too at home if you want to play with this. But I can just run scratch sig main here. The only thing I'm thinking about, just for a little more efficiency with what we're doing here, is maybe I'll just call this type tx struct. And we'll just pretend this is a transaction. We can just come in here and define that transaction. So we've got this. Let's try to run that. Um, make scratch program here. So I should be able to say make scratch and there's the hash, okay? So there's that 32 byte hash in this encoded sort of string that we're going to use uh, for displays and everything else. Um, there it is. Now, there it is. So if we run this program again for the same data, we get the same value. So check, we checked off the first thing for the same data, we always get the same value. Now, let's just change some one, one thing here, right? So, so given this, we take V, and maybe we change the value or we change the from to equal something a little different. Maybe it's just BIL. And then we'll hash that again. And it should be completely different, right? We're just changing this one sort of byte out of it. If we really want to be, um, maybe, 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 just because I think it would be a little more accurate in saying changing just one little thing. What if we just change the value to 11, all right? Just change the value to 11. We should get a really different, different st string. Look at that. I mean, right from the, st the stretch, it's completely different. So this is beautiful. There's no way to correlate that the second hash is related really to the same data on the first hash. All we did was change the value from 10 to 11. So we check that box off. And I'm going to be telling you right now, there's no way for me to <laughs> prove there are no collisions. And people are trying to do that all the time. Uh, I could, right, we got to just iterate over and like, we're not going to do that. So let's just, let's just feel confident that the SHA-256 won't have collisions. But you have at least seen us apply the first two rules to our hashing uh, function here. So pretty good here. We now have the ability to hash some data and by using the the SHA um, module there and SHA module package and uh, from the standard library and our SUM256 function. So what I'm going to do for us now is get status this right there. So we've got the two new files that I want to add. Get add all. There it is. Everything now is staged, so we can do a git commit minus am added signature package and hash support. Okay, cool. Let me push this. Uh, like the log, like the log. Good. Okay, so we now have what we need in terms of hashing. Um, the next step that I kind of want to talk about is this idea of stamping. Sometimes it's called salt. It's actually usually called salting. But um, I don't know how word salt is, is a little foreign to me. I like this idea of stamping a piece of data. Um, and, and we'll talk about that next.